Uh, Honourable Chris Finlayson. Mr Chairman, I was most interested in that florid uh, contribution by Moana Mackey before the dinner break, and I've been very interested also in comments about the Minister's SOP 205, um, advanced by some of our most distinguished and leading citizens, who say that the proposed amendments breach international law and attack our democratic freedoms. And that when I heard that, I thought, well, we'd better have a, a good look at that, because they are very serious allegations. And I uh, then found out the authors of the statement. There was Dame Anne Salmond, who wrote a most interesting book on Captain Cook, which clearly qualified her to speak about the high seas, uh, and um, <coughs> former Prime Minister Sir Geoffrey Palmer, who could be, only be described as sort of the apotheosis of constitutional virtue, <laughs> whose voice was particularly quiet when the foreshore and seabed legislation was being debated in this House, mainly, I think, probably because he was acting for the marine farming uh, institution. And it was very quiet when the dreadful Stalinist electoral finance legislation was going through the House. But it's great to hear that he's found his constitutional voice again uh, and uh, has been uh, opining at great length in between talking to Sir Bruce Ferguson, presumably about GSB matters on Lambton Quay this afternoon. Uh, and so I, was, uh, I took a good look at the legislation and was immediately drawn to Sir Geoffrey's lectures in 1975 when he taught me legal system because Sir Geoffrey, the great teacher that he was, said how important it was to focus on the wording of the legislation. And I, I can recall a lawyer appearing in the Court of Appeal many years ago telling the Court of Appeal that there were 12 possible interpretations of a section of the Act and after about two and a half hours of driving their honours nuts, uh, the President of the Court of Appeal, then Sir Robin Cook, said, well, there's a th 13th. And the fellow said, well, what is that, sir? He said, the plain meaning. And, and I really think that this is a situation where uh, if one gets away from the hyperbole, one gets away from the purple prose and the waffle uh, and the politically inspired criticism of the SOP and focuses rather on the wording of the legislation, uh, one sees that the answer is tolerably clear. Because I come to clause uh, 101B and note that it has nothing whatsoever to do with protest. People are fully entitled to exercise their democratic rights and protest. What the legislation, what the clause that my friend the Minister of Energy is seeking to introduce here uh, deals with the commission of an offence if damage is caused under subclause A, damage or interference with any equipment under subclause B, or interference with operations or activities under subclause C. So the proposed amendments which have excited the great and the good of the, of, uh, the area inside the Beltway, these, as I say, these apotheoses of constitutional virtues, Sir Geoffrey and Dame Anne and other members of the great and good, these proposed amendments relate to damage or interference, not protest. Uh, and uh, there is no reason at all while people, uh, why people cannot exercise their democratic rights to protest, but it has to be uh, protest which does not result in damage or interference with, for example, under subclause A, the structure or the ship. So it's quite a straightforward matter, and I hear, I hear these, the, the creatures on the other side yelling out, uh, how embarrassing. But I think that Sir Geoffrey always said uh, when he was teaching me law, focus on the words, focus on the plain meaning. He didn't say it like that. But he, he, was some, he was acting like some ranting uh, uh, Jehovah wandering over desks as he used to do because he was, he was more important with creating an impression rather than teaching at times. But if you focus on the words, focus on the words, that's the suggestion I make to members on the other side of the House. Get away from the purple prose. Get away from the hyperbole. This afternoon we've experienced some, some tragically hyperbolic speeches on, on GCSB. It's all so very simple. Focus on the plain meaning. Focus on the words. 
and the answer will become tolerably clear. And so that's why I think, Mr. Chairman, uh, Honourable Crispin, listen. that's why I believe that uh, great people, though they are, Sir Geoffrey and Dayman, have got it wrong, uh, and their statements about uh, the amendments breaching international law, though what particular principle of international law is not immediately clear to me, uh, or attacking our democratic freedoms. You could just imagine Sir Geoffrey declaiming on that uh, thing. Uh, I'm sorry, it's just plain wrong. And if Sir Geoffrey followed the advice that he gave to me in 1975 and suggested that we focus on the words of the statute, the words of the bill, then I think we can get to a very happy place very quickly indeed. A <laughs> uh, point of order, Moana Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if the minister has a legal opinion, I'd ask that he table it. That's uh, not a point of order, and uh, uh, it was a very uh, positive well, well, contribution. Well, and well, <laughs> Well, well, if the member is actually quoting from a legal point of order and has the piece of paper, yes, it is an order, but I don't believe he is. I think he was just speaking from notes. And so, <laughs> speaking off the cuff, all right. <coughs> so, uh, the uh, point of order is not upheld. Mar Honourable Marion Street, you're seeking a call. I am. Well, then, go for it. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Can I just note, I don't, uh, I don't wish to...